Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Kerry with Long Shot. Welcome to Underdog Stories, episode three. I'm here with my man Daniel Joseph, what a uh, magician extraordinaire. Um, here on Underdog Stories, I love to bring fellow underdogs in out of the community, out of my little network that I see out there hustling and chasing uh, their long shot and doing big things. So uh, Daniel and I hit, go back a couple years, and he's yeah. been uh, he's been performing magic and wowing people on the streets of San Diego, uh, and he's got his sights on bigger and better things. So he's joining me uh, today to talk a little bit about his underdog story and what's going on with him. Yeah. Yeah, so how you, how you doing, Jeff? You know, it's, uh, I feel like things are finally starting to come together yeah. a little bit. Granted, so we've known each other for five years. Yeah, man. And back then, I had no idea what I wanted. Yeah. But uh, I had a couple of people that I found mm -hmm. give me a little kick in the butt, like, hey, man, Figure out what you want to do, and if it's what you want to do, why are you sitting on it? For sure, for sure. So, so magic is the focus, right? Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, what got you into being like? What What really got you into like being like, yo, that's what I want to do with my life. Like, I want to do magic. Oh, I, it's so hard because, like, first is what got me into magic, like ever interested, which is, as most people of our generation that like magic. The David Blaine Street Magic Special. Oh, yeah, man. The, very, the original. Yeah, yeah, David Blaine. Uh, was never a big Chris Angel guy. Still not really a big Chris Angel guy. Yeah. Uh, but that's another story. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so my mom actually got me a magic kit mm -hmm. when I was like 11 or mm -hmm. 12. And I loved that thing. I was, yeah. I want to do all this. There's one trick in particular that came in it. And it was like this, this large domino. Uh -huh. And it had these magnetic little white dots so you could secretly yeah like move them around and oh. change it i yeah. was really really bad at it because like <laughs> you're not supposed to see the hands moving yeah and my hands would be like all over the yeah. thing you know, and you're like 11. <laughs> yeah exactly you know i was a kid so yeah. i had no concept of like actual performing mm -hmm. so my, my friends picked on me and i was really good at football yeah and karate and stuff yeah. so i was like well I, you know i like my friends liking me yeah for sure so i dropped the magic and then it came it didn't come back around until I got out of here for the Marine Corps, started finding more a long time. Nice. And I was like, man, I don't have any hobbies, I don't have anything to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I picked up a deck of cards and I just started playing with some old tricks that I used to do. And we're, I was at a barracks party, did uh -huh. a trick, went really well. And I was like, you know what? Marine, by the way, go figure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah. um, that's what's up, man. It's, it's funny, there's something about that um, like 10, 11, 12, uh, year old, um, I don't know. Formative years. Yeah, formative years where um, something happens and it like changes the course of your life. So for me, it was um, it was going to my uncle's wedding out here in California, and I was like, it was the first time I had been to California, and I you know this place was so different from the East Coast. I'm from uh, you know North Carolina, and it was just so different out here and I just I was blown away right yeah the culture is immediately it's, a different it's so different man so um, I came out to California and it just blew my mind and I uh, sorry hang on one second Daniel bear with me Maybe, man. I'm just gonna share this thing real quick yeah so something about you know being that young and then having an experience or something comes into your life and then you're like wow like this is what I want to do, or that's where I want to be. And you just or, want to know all of it. Yeah, for sure. And you just get this fire about it, man. And I, I don't know what it is about that, that, you know, time frame, that cycle that you're in when you're that young. But I, I feel like, you know, something that happens that has a major impression on you like that, it like sets a course, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and yours was, you know, magic. Yeah. Well, I, and honestly, I couldn't pin it to anything in that special, uh -huh. but I don't know, just seeing... Uh, that's about seeing him just going around and interacting with people. I've always been very social. For sure. And the impact that he was having on these total strangers, mm -hmm. I, I was like, you know, I wish I could go and impact people in such a positive way like that. Right. Uh, I feel like magic gets a bit of a bad rap sometimes because yeah. it's like, let me let me fool you. I'm so <laughs> cool. Yeah. But I just see it as such a positive opportunity. For sure. You know, like if you're having a bad day, I feel like magic, at least for me. Right. I see a good magic trick. I'm like, oh, wow. And it's hard for me to be in a bad mental space. Right. Absolutely. You know, whenever you're blown away, it's hard to be like, oh, wow, that's so amazing. Right. <sighs> yeah. You know? For sure. It's it's not, um, it's entertainment 
as as distraction, but in like a pure form. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not scrolling mindlessly through social media. You know, distraction. Yeah. It's like in, intent and you know entertainment meme compilations. Right? Yeah, for <laughs> sure, man. For sure. Um, which I dude, I love your videos. Like the there's I've noticed a trend of like goofy street performing like magicians or you know street artists you know magicians yeah. or whatever and i know you did a, a little rant on them a couple oh weeks ago my, oh, i saw, I saw yeah. that video dude and i yeah. laughed so hard but i've oh. noticed this trend of of those guys but what i like about your stuff is that you're a skilled performer and you are actually funny you know in your videos and stuff it's not you know these hokey paid people yeah. reacting to a yeah. trick that is obviously, you know, they, they don't pull anything away from, but yours is actually yeah. funny and you're a skilled performer. Yeah, mom mom just kind of beat honesty into me. Yeah. And so whenever I see anything that's disingenuous like that, which, again, there's an argument that we made, like, magic is deception. Right, right. But I, it, it, in the magic community, it's, it's an honest deception. Like, you know what you're here for. Right. And, uh, but then for... And that's why I'm not a big Chris Angel fan because sure. he, he did a his whole TV show was like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I I really don't appreciate <laughs> yeah. you doing a magic trick, and then I'm supposed to feel a heightened experience because mm -hmm. all these people are around you right. that can clearly see the trick <laughs> yeah. behind you, and they're just like, "Oh my God, that's the craziest thing I've ever <laughs> seen in my life." Yeah. How 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 is anyone doing an honest work mm -hmm. if we're gonna say that? You know, right? How do they compete with that? For sure. Yeah. You know? I feel you, man. I feel you, and that's why I enjoy your stuff. Like you're a true practitioner, and you know you're. Uh, super skilled and that's another thing I wanted to talk to you about is you know magic is one of those things where it's you see the end result and you're blown away by it you know what I mean but you have no idea what is involved with like learning you know a new trick like that or you know what what kind of hours were put into getting the yeah. sleight of hand just right um, so what kind of discipline and practice does it take you know to pull off a good magic trick it's insane um, literally so the one trick that I do the the most, which I would say I'm, I'm the best at, it's one of the first card effects I ever learned, mm -hmm. and that should tell you something. I've been uh, actively pursuing magic for seven years, right. and so I have seven years of practice with this move. Mm -hmm. I'm still not happy with it. Uh, I still don't think it's okay, mm -hmm. and I think almost any magician that seriously practices would tell you the same thing. It's not anything that uh, you can just pick up and do. Sure you can, but if you want an example of that, just go to YouTube, search magic, and then go to most recent. Mm -hmm. And you'll see a lot of bad examples because people just pick it up, they'll go to do it, mm -hmm. and then it's horrible. And so <laughs> the discipline is really less in the practice. Everyone, anyone can understand you gotta practice right. a move. Right. The real discipline is in not performing, mm -hmm. which is almost counterintuitive as to why you're learning. Right, right. But it's the matter of being, of realizing all right, I know this move, uh -huh. and I know how to do it, but is it ready for me to show to somebody well, and having that discipline? Because you, you'll be in a good mood. You may be performing something. You're working on something on the side. Right. And, I, I mean, I'll get a couple of drinks in me while I'm performing. Yeah, for And sure. I'll just say, hey, this is the one. This is, <laughs> yeah. I got it. It's I'll coming out. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I drop sure. cards all over the floor, <laughs> which is a whole nother practice. you got to learn, learn how to recover from your failures. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but, yeah, it's, it's that restraint to not do honestly man that's something i would have never thought of is like the you know it reminds me of some quote like true power is knowing not when or knowing when not to yeah. do something about it you know or yeah. or whatever it's um, like knowledge is knowing something wisdom is knowing how to apply it right right so I, I just would have never put it together that you know a challenge for you know a magician or a performer would be uh when to hold the trick until it's ready, you know, that's dope. What I battle with myself is, I'll be like, well, I need to practice it more. Mm -hmm. But you need to practice it in front of people, too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and so it's, yeah. it's always just, a, you want to show people because you're practicing. You want to you want to show off what you're working on. But at the same time, you're going to end up ruining an effect. So. Yeah. Well, when you're out performing and stuff, or when you meet people and they ask you what you're into, and you're like, magic, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Like what's the one thing? What's the one thing you hear most when you present that idea to people? It's it's a tie, I think. If the first two things come to my mind, people are like, "Oh, so you do like kids' birthday parties?" Which I hate. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. is fine. I'll, you know, you got a kid, I'll 
I'll do your kid's birthday party. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, but they're just like, because as an adult, mm -hmm. and it's just, I feel like magic, just, again, gets such a bad rap. For sure. And like, oh, well, I'm smarter. It always comes down to that, like, yeah. an ego type thing. Right, right. And so it's like, oh, so you can, you can perform for my kids. Or the other one is, oh, dude, I play Magic the Gathering as well. Like, I'm like, great. <laughs> yeah, I've got my cards with me. Exactly. No, like, that's, that's, that's totally happened yeah. before. Like, right. it's, I, never anything that I thought somebody would assume. Right. But uh, it happens so often now. Uh, there's a lot of Magic the Gathering. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of fans. It's huge. A lot of fans. Um, so, do, do people ever hit you with some, like, are you kidding me? Like, type reactions? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, so not so much blunt, like, right. are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. But they will be passive-aggressive to almost just not angrily aggressive. Mm -hmm. uh, a good example, I had a, a guy who would recognize me from performing at a different bar, and uh, he's like, oh, dude, I saw you at Cafe 21. Mm -hmm. Like, you got to show my friends some stuff. And so I went over, went to show him some stuff, and then this guy... He's like, oh, you're a magician? Oh, okay, well, it's like, I've seen this stuff before. Hadn't even started. Yeah. I haven't even started. Like, right. there's so much magic out there. I haven't seen it all. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's constantly... Penn and Teller's Fool Us is a show For about sure. magicians who have done it their whole lives mm -hmm. and still getting fooled. Right. But this guy just... Oh, I've, I've seen this stuff. Yeah, for sure. So I get, I'll get that one sometimes. Yeah. But that's, it's all uh, another day in the life. For sure. Well, I kind of want to see a trick, <laughs> and I was hoping that you would maybe... Do something of course, I couldn't, I couldn't have shown up yeah. not expecting to do <laughs> one. Um, so I do have to say, there is an interesting thing mm -hmm. that happens with magicians. Uh, almost every time that they pull out a deck, they have to tell you, this, hey dude, this is a normal deck. Right. And it kind of becomes this thing where uh, the only people that tell you they're not lying are liars. Yeah, for sure. Right, so I've got this normal deck. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I've got this completely this regular completely deck completely normal deck. It's pretty though. Uh -huh. It's nice. It is. It's a good looking deck of cards. But, but uh, if you'd like... I'd make, Go ahead and make grab cool, one out of there. Yeah, I'd make a cool shirt design. Oh, they're awesome. Yeah. They're, they're amazing. Yeah. So you can uh, check that out? Yeah. All right. You can show it to the, the camera make sure I'm not. Yes. I don't want to cheat. Check that out. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, you just would put it back into the, the pack. Yeah. That's a good spot. Bye. Perfect. All right. Now, now you're trapped. Yeah. I got you. Now it's done. Yeah. Uh, now, what most good magicians uh -huh. would do is they'd be able to find it because they can keep track, actually. Of right. like how many cards they just pulled. Uh huh. I'm not. I'm not that good. Yeah. You got to mark the cards, right? Uh huh. That's what I got. I got to. And if you put it back in, I mark it a little bit. Uh huh. And I don't know if you'll see it. It's kind of subtle. But you see, we get a little. We get a yeah. little marking on it. Uh huh. Now it would be impressive if this was your card, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Is that it? Yep. That's it. Perfect. All right. We'll put that one down. <laughs> Another thing that good magicians don't do. Uh huh. Is they don't do a trick twice. But I really like this one. <laughs> so I like for you to. Uh, We'll do it this way. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Right there. Mm -hmm. All right, check that. Check that one out. Uh huh. And actually, uh, pull it out. Uh, all the way. Yeah. Check it. Show the camera. You got it. There we go. All right. We'll just do this again. Whenever you want to put it in. Right there. <laughs> put it on top. That'd be a sneaky spot. Yeah. Uh. So again, though, as you put it in, right there. Uh huh. We gave it a little mark. Or maybe we didn't. This might be why good magicians don't do them twice. <laughs> uh, She's in there you know what? It. Actually, I think I uh, only brought the one marked card. Yeah. Actually, so. Uh... <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> wow! So the second card. Um, I don't know how you did that, man. I am truly, uh, truly amazed right now. That's incredible, man. I appreciate it. That's rad. I like how you worked a mistake into the um i'm a man of mistakes the trick i am i am not a <laughs> flawless yeah, individual for sure man so i kind of got to build my whole uh routines around it yeah that's awesome man plus i mean everyone's waiting for a magician to make a mistake for sure let's be honest but dude there man there is a magical lesson in that <laughs> dude i love that so um is does the mistake help provide distraction at all absolutely yeah okay absolutely <laughs> uh so this effect was actually an effect popularized by uh, a bit of a legend in magic, Pop Hayden. Okay. Check him out. He's got a whole YouTube channel. He's pretty dope. <laughs> um, I mean, that, that literally means nothing. He's, he's a literal <laughs> legend in magic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was popularized by him. And if you watch him, he does so much of that. Mm -hmm. He just, he's, he's just, 
his character or persona is very off kilter. Okay. And so there's a lot of personality things right. that you can do as an entertainer. There's there's some uh, magicians that spend years figuring out uh, who they're going to be. You could say that I've I've spent the last seven years figuring out who I'm going to be as a performer. For sure. And then I decided recently yeah. why I'm I'm me. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. That is the that is the best road to take, man. Is trying to find. Um, you know, find your own way and distill it down to the the truest sense of who you are, like in the simplest form. You know exactly. what I mean? Um, and I believe that every you know every great brand is the truest expression of a, a really great individual. Um, and I think that you know you owning your style um, is going to play a crucial part in the success of Daniel Joseph. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was hard. It was hard to accept. Uh, it's honestly a more recent thing where I just had to be honest with myself. Like I'm trying to be this other person, mm -hmm. and why? Right. Why? Like I, I don't. Why do I need to create a character? It's so much easier. I don't have to play up. I don't have to. I'm not gonna get caught out being me. Exactly, man. That's the problem, you know, with people who who are trying to fake it. You know, there's some there's a, a bulletproof aspect of authenticity, mm -hmm. and that you know, you're not going to trip yourself up being you. Um, if you create a separate character, uh, there's all kinds of opportunities for exposure, you know, where people can be like, dude, that's not, you know, yeah. that's not you. Shout out to Iggy. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out Iggy, man. But, you know, that uh, that authenticity um, is okay, truly, I'm, truly I'm not important straight. enough for that to come back at me. <laughs> yeah, in anyway. for sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares about us, bro. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Um, uh, well, uh, so one of the things that's huge for me is visualization. And I think, you know, a, a lot of times, you know, having a vision and being the one chasing that vision, especially one that nobody else can see, you know, it gets um, challenging and it gets a little lonely at times. You yeah. know, they, they yeah. say... You know, no man is an island, but dude, sometimes as a person doing it on your own, it feels like yeah, it, man know. might not be, but a mind sure can be. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. It, it's the truth, and you know, finding others. That's one of the reasons I wanted to start Underdog Stories was to show other people that are out there on a unique journey that you know you're not alone. There are there's a community of us out here chasing a long shot. You know, yeah. um, but visualization is something that played a huge role in you know, me chasing my dreams and aspirations and stuff like that. And um, it was funny because there was a very uh, dark period in my life where I tried to envision my perfect life and, and what it would look like. Um, it was nine years, the, the exercise was to do nine years from that day. What does your perfect life look like? And I described it in such extreme detail um, in a notebook that I've still got laying around. Um, and then it was crazy. Uh, I think it was three, three or four years later. Um, I looked back and I read that, and it, it straight up, dude, brought me to tears because I had done everything that I said, you know, I was gonna do yeah. uh, from in that dark period, and uh, was now living in that the dream state that I had imagined for myself. So, visualization is a huge thing for me, um, and I wanted to try that kind of, that exercise with you. Uh, now about where you're going so in fuck it five you know let's say five yeah. years uh, in five years where are you what are you doing where are you performing five years I would like to say I'm in Vegas mm -hmm. I'm performing I don't even want to say Fremont Street because I would suggest that I'm still street performing I would like <laughs> to say it's so crazy that you brought this up okay I'm going I'm to share an, a literal dream state of mine yeah, yeah. that fits the timeline that you're presenting, mm -hmm. which might be ambitious from where I'm sitting right now. Mm -hmm. I was on deployment. Uh, I kind of woke up full of energy, felt like I like kind of lost my mind a little bit. Right. You know, you're living in the desert. You're on night shifts by oh, yourself. Bro. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I had a dream. I, I Simplify. Shout out all the Marines out there. If you're a Marine or no Marine, drop a comment, say what's up, click share. Um, we love the support. <laughs> Absolutely. I, and I, I woke up and I just understood things so vividly about this life I had yet to live. Right. So where I was, 
I was at the Luxor. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a convenient thing about something I've already said twice here. I don't like Chris Angel. Chris Angel's at the Luxor. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so it's a, it's a vendetta. No, I don't know what? that that's what it is, but I just, I woke up from this dream. I, I could just remember all these memories that mm -hmm. I have yet to have right. from this dream state in me mm -hmm. who's performing at the Luxor. Uh, I'm getting chills just talking about it, but my dream's like zooming in on Vegas. Mm -hmm. It sees my face on a billboard. Mm -hmm. It goes to the Luxor. It zooms into the Luxor. It goes behind the curtains. The curtains open up. I see myself ahead of me. The like camera pans in to me with my what? arms stretched open and people clapping as I'm starting my show at the Luxor. Wow. That's so sick, dude. <laughs> So I think it's so funny how our subconscious gives us like clues sometimes as to what it is we really want. One of my chills just telling that I haven't bro, told that story in so rad, long. Man. It's like it's. I'm telling it's you, intense. one day, one day you're gonna be on a episode of something that matters, <laughs> yeah. and you're gonna be talking about that dream. Um, one day this episode will matter. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I hope so, man. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's so awesome how the mind will, you know, our subconscious will give us clues as to what it is that, you know, we truly want. I think one of my biggest challenges um, is, n you know, knowing exactly what it is that I want uh, and then making, you know, placing the things in my life in a certain position that will move me toward that thing. Um, but again, that's where, you know, visualization and I'm talking about active visualization where like you're writing down, you mm -hmm. know, the things that you, you see for yourself you know, at a certain point in the future or something like that, um, that becomes extremely useful, um, a super, super helpful tool uh, in figuring out, figuring out what it is that you want. Um, but that's awesome, man. I, I really, you know, I really see it happening for you too, man. Uh, smashing the Luxor oh, dude, in Vegas. It's so crazy <laughs> to think that, like, uh, granted, there's, there's a million, you know, there's infinite possibilities how all those things could come true. For sure. But it is definitely a difference if you're pursuing it or not. And, dude, the Chris Angel thing, it's super important to have, like, somebody that you look up to but in a competitive way. Yeah, I have to respect him. Yeah, for you sure. Know, I have to, but, uh, yeah. But, that, bro, that's a huge part of the underdog spirit, you know, down with the champ. You know, yeah. it's like yeah. he's he doesn't work as hard as me. He's not as hungry as I am. You know, I'm coming for it, and I'm coming for it all. You know, but it's forever, you know, that mindset where it's, you know, it's always the next thing. Uh, it's never, you know, being satisfied with comfortable or okay. You know, it's always going for that next, that next thing. Yeah. I would say my big thing is a, it's a, it's a battle between inspiration versus aspiration. Right. I think a lot of people uh, have an issue in where they conflate the two. Mm -hmm. They see somebody uh, and they're like, oh, I want what they have. And then they just try to be that person. They aspire to be that person. Right, As right. opposed to being inspired by mm -hmm. the accomplishments of that person. For sure. And Absolutely. Especially in magic, because that's, I mean, that's where I get most of my experience. I see a lot of other magicians where they'll see a routine. Right. And then they just go and do that mm -hmm. routine. <laughs> like, word for word, uh -huh. movement for movement. Right. They just repeat and repeat and repeat. And they don't have their own character because mm -hmm. they're not... They, they aren't their own character. Right. That's where that authenticity thing comes into play, man. And that's another thing that I do with, you know, my company, Longshot. Um, same thing in the apparel business, right? So, yeah. you know, there are a million, you know, small clothing companies out there. Yeah. This is my second one. You know, I've experienced just a ton of this cookie cutter, you know, um, slap it on yeah. style of uh, going about apparel manufacturing and stuff like that mm -hmm. and that's why I'm really proud of doing everything 100% myself every design that I put out was me on my you know yeah. and they're, they're great by so, the way thank they're, you they're brother. amazing <laughs> I love them. I appreciate it shout out to the shirt looking good bro not thank not you. even <laughs> like being I'm not being buddy buddy right now I have this one and I have the one that he wore in the last episode uh my two favorite shirts right now thanks bro I appreciate that and yeah, Dan was one of the first supporters of the brand. Uh, he and his girl Ryan, man, they they both got a shirt. And uh, y'all uh, on the Instagram page for Longshot, if you look under the represent tab, y'all are like two of the first, the first people ones in the store. Yeah, that we're representing man. So yeah. I, I really appreciate it, man. And um, if the before we go, if you have um, if you had one piece of advice uh, for anybody out there chasing the long shot, you know something that 
has a high probability of failure and something that they may be getting negative feedback on or you know people trying to hold them back uh, if you had one piece of advice for those people what it, what would it be uh, I mean I don't know if I could give one I, the summary of it mm -hmm. would be to just just do it don't don't think anything else it would be it would go back to the inspiration versus aspiration thing right uh, a big a big thing that I struggled with was I would see these other magicians and some like some much younger than me mm -hmm. uh, where they're already so successful yeah and that's so daunting because then then you're comparing yourself but there's no timeline on success right you can't sit here and say I haven't accomplished what these other people have accomplished uh, because you are wherever you are and they are wherever they are they didn't just wake up successful for sure so the sum of my one bit of advice is Focus on where you're at uh -huh. and just work on you. Right. Just do you, boo-boo. <laughs> do you, boo-boo. That's yeah. great, man. So where can the people find you? Uh, right now, I'm most active on Instagram and YouTube. Uh, so Instagram is at Daniel Joseph underscore EMT. And uh, my YouTube isn't big enough to have its own special URL yet. <laughs> yeah. But you can search Daniel Joseph and you'll see a, uh, a little picture of me. Uh, about three down, I believe. Nice. Awesome, man. Well, Daniel, thank you so much, brother, for coming and joining me today. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for all the support, man. Uh, I really appreciate it. It means a ton. And uh, look out for Daniel Joseph, guys, uh, coming to a Las Vegas show near you. The Luxor, five years. <laughs> yeah.